very warm welcome to jump to it here on irishracing.com it is Cheltenham gold cup day it's the big one uh what a day of action we have in store of course uh to give their views and insight onto all things uh Cheltenham festival as we've been seeing all week we have Vincent Finnegan and Stephen Harris with us uh great to see you again then gentlemen uh this has been a real topsy-turvy week in terms of uh bookmakers results uh, results for punters uh even horses getting booed in the winners enclosures uh Stephen yeah. as a uh, uh, tiger rolled and delta work came back in it's uh it's been uh, something good for everyone so far yes yeah, it's, it's been really Really amazing, great week, and today's the best day. Really, is cracking race with the Gold Cup. Of course, we started day one on good to firm ground, despite the description from the clerk of the course. And by Wednesday afternoon, it was heavy, wasn't it? So we've got two drying days, Thursday and Friday, and I think it's going to be a lovely day on Gold Cup day. So yeah, it'll probably be soft ground, which no excuses really. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, Vincent, um, uh, great to bring you in here. I say that uh, we, we build it up for, for a bit of fun more than anything. But the, the battle between uh, the, the Presbury Cup battle, shall we say, uh, the, the Brits are holding their own at the moment. The home team have been uh, firing in a few winners, showing a bit of resistance, especially when uh, the likes of local trainer Ben Pooling uh, pulls a rabbit out mm -hmm. of the hat in the Grand Annual. Yeah, it's very good so far. Some some great horses. We've seen some brilliant performances from the UK horses, Constitution Hill being the obvious one. Yeah. But done very well and considering that it's eight six i think after um two days at the halfway mark in it and you've got um shishkin not included there as well yeah, so yeah. You, you think of how good it could have been for the uk yeah. horses um friday is going to change all that in my opinion as we're going to discuss in a few minutes i think the irish have a really strong hand i think they could possibly win all the races yeah just very quickly congratulations you did say anergamine would win the champion chase from a long way out uh the race didn't quite pan out how we thought it would do as we said but you can't take anything away from anergamine he handled the ground he jumped he traveled and he won convincingly most disappointing race i think i've ever watched mm, <laughs> in, in, yeah. in truth yeah. I, I i had built it up in my head it was going to be the greatest race possibly ever run when you had two previous winners at the guts of 50 to one the last two winners of yeah. the race it showed the, the quality level we were at and it was just a disaster yeah. um you had nupa negra taken out then you had mm. shishkin pulling up after a few and then you then you check in purse wall falling it just mm. fell apart yeah the yeah. only thing i can take out of it regardless of an argument winning the only thing i can take out of it is that envoy allen is not a horse he's no good um he had every chance there you thought he would definitely stay coming to the mm. second last and fell in the hole i was very disappointed with him particularly because i thought he he was going to be a contender there the way the race had fallen apart but he fell apart himself yeah mm. absolutely it was one, one of those races often the ways that uh we build it up to billboard status and, and things don't yeah. come right anyway uh moving on to the the friday things kick off at 1 30 as ever uh with the jcb triumph hurdle two miles one for on the new course let's remember uh the first two days chat on the old course this is the new course here much more emphasis on stamina i think it'd fair, be fair to say uh voban is generally your market leader for this uh pied piper of course is his, his old foe and rival for the gordon elliott team uh it is generally second favorite here around three to one phil door also represented by gordon elliott uh, at five to one uh the big three i'm coining them as stephen uh, out of those three uh, do you have a conviction on which way you'd be heading with those uh if you don't outside of those do you see something left to field getting into the mix of what could be pretty testing ground yeah it's a brilliant race they said 12 runners um, the best of the English runners now on soft ground for me is Porticello of Gary mm. Moore. Obviously had a brilliant season. He definitely wants soft ground. He's a thorough stayer. Um, I suspect his form is at least a stone behind the front three in the market. Um, the other ones, Dr. Parnassus, well, he was a fast ground horse on the flat of Dan Skelton's. Uh, car now then with stolen money. And Knight Salute has been winning on good or good to soft ground um, in workman like style he only does enough when he hits the front but i don't see him as a soft ground slugger and i don't think he's anywhere near good enough so i do think it is the big three at the front of the market right. um my thoughts are that voban who has been quite easy to back in the last 24 hours um i think that is because he is all speed and he murdered fildor for speed last time out in ireland and i think fildor set too slow a tempo and was picked off and i think this track uh, much more testing much more uh, of a stamina test will really suit Fildor. And I do think Fildor is a very good each way bet. Um, I respect the claims of Pied Piper, who has got Cheltenham form at least all right yep. on the other course, but it does count for something. And he was very impressive in beating nothing. He could be anything um, to be true to. But I think now at the prices they've gone to, Fildor's about five to one at the moment. Yeah. Each way, almost guaranteed to give his running, will be ridden positively, yeah. will keep pulling out the hill. 
can't see him being out of the three, and I think he could win. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a very fair point. I think a lot of people would agree. Uh, uh, Vincent, bringing you on, in on this, I mean, the tactics will be interesting. Uh, we've discussed this on previous shows. For the likes of Vauban and Pied Piper, uh, ex-flat horses with a turn of foot. You've got uh, like Phil Dore and Gary Moore's horse, Paul Ciccello, probably be in their best interest to turn this into an absolute war of attrition. Uh, which side of the fence are you sitting? I'm going with the war of attrition one. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. Gonna, I, I, yeah. I'd agree. Look, yeah. the, what we saw on um, the second day on Wednesday, when we saw how bad that ground was, mm. and it's going to get worse, you would imagine, for Friday, because it'll dry up a, a considerable amount. There's due to be no more rain, so it's going to be very tacky ground. It's going to, some horses just won't handle this at all. That's that's one side of it. Yeah. The other thing to take into account here, these are young horses. They're only four-year-olds as well. And this is a, generally, for most of them, this race is nearly a furlong more than they've run before because it's nearly, it's, it's almost two miles and one furlong. It doesn't sound like a whole lot, but it is. It's it's one ninth extra or whatever it is, or um, the extra furlong, sorry, eight furlongs in a mile, one sixteenth extra. Um, but it, it might make a difference up a hill as well. I, I think Vauban is vulnerable because of that. Pied Piper was very impressive, as we said, um, at Cheltenham the last day. Has had a nice break as well. Could have could have could have improved since then. I still think Fildor is the one, though I wouldn't be surprised to see Porticello come in here somewhere with the heavy ground form it had in France and it's run on soft ground in the UK as well. Yeah. It, if this turns into a real battle and a slog, and it probably will, I, I think you're looking at the likes of Fildor and Porticello for me. Maybe the pair of them each way would be my way looking at it because I can't see both Pied Piper, Vauban, and some of there's a there's a lot of others in here that really won't handle this ground on what they've done already. The likes of Lunar Power and, and several others look like they, they'd want decent ground. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's fair to say, yeah, like generally we're against Vauban here. I slightly disagree with Stephen and Dr. Panassas. I thought the, the ground was pretty deep the, the day he won it at Scott. But uh, yeah, again, whether he's up to this level, uh, we, we don't know. But I'd generally be, I'm Phil or Dr. Panassas versus the field. So uh, yeah, we're out to get the shorties beat in, in the opener at the Triumph Hurdle at 130. All in all, I just hope the race lives up to the billing because uh, at least if those big three are in contention, swinging into the home straight, it will be some spectacle, won't it? That's the Triumph Hurdle. Uh, done and dusted. Uh, on to the 210 now, of course. Uh, this is the contractors, McCoy Contractors County Handicap Hurdle, uh, two miles wide furlong again uh, on the new course. Uh, wide open, or is it? State Man, uh, one of the preview night horses, I think it's fair to say, uh, Vincent, uh, well supported uh, for this uh, once we knew where he was actually heading. Uh, do you see him as the one to beat? Absolutely, I do. I can't believe the handicap mark the horse has got. Like, what, what I don't understand here is how the handicapper has actually given him a mark. You, you're looking at him well back to win a maiden hurdle at Christmas in Leopardstown, cruising when it fell two out. Then it goes at one to seven to Limerick on the 1st of February and hacks up in a bad race. And he gives it a one four one. Sure, you, that's finger in the air stuff. I would have thought. Well, I, I don't know how you give. Well, I was just going to say, but it's, it's a very good point on a wider issue you raise here. How do you? Where's the algorithm to calculate that? If you see what I'm saying, it's guesswork essentially. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, then you take another horse in here, Colonel Mustard. We know how you can rate him in the sense that he's run. He's run against decent horses, so we can. We've we've got collateral form all over the place. He's second to John Bonney. He's third to Sir Gerhardt, admittedly beaten twelve lengths, but that three stripe life in second. So. We can we can gauge all of that. We have no yeah. way of knowing what this state man is. He he could have twenty pound in hand, or he could be twenty pound wrong for all we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'd like I'd be erring on the side that he's yeah, twenty pound yeah. in hand. In truth, yeah. it's it's just very difficult to know how good this horse is. And we had Danny Mullins on our Cheltenham special, and yeah. he was saying wherever this runs, he thought it would win, and you can see why. Um, it could be very well handicapped. Yeah. There's a few others in here. Irish again. You've got Surprise Package. That was some winner of the Imperial Cup last week in Sandown. It's sluiced in, yeah. so you know it's coming here in serious form. That that would have to be some sort of a contender. It's got a five pound penalty, but even so. And then the other one that I've liked all along is Top Bandit of Gordon Elliott, Davy Russell on board. This horse, funny horse, took five goals to win a bumper, and oftentimes with those horses that take a long time to win a bumper, when they do get the hurdles in front of them, they really improve. And this yeah. horse has won its last three. Significant thing here as well is this this often helps from Irish horses to get a handicap rating, a good handicap rating for Cheltenham, is if you've run in the UK and this horse won its maiden in Cheltenham. So the the English handicapper thinks he has a, a feel of what the horse is because of that, rather than the ones that are running like um State Man down in Limerick or wherever, where he has no idea what the other horses are like and he just throws them up a few pounds. But with Top Bandit, I think he might be somewhat leniently treated at 135. 
Interesting, yeah. Top bandit there for uh, for Gordon Elliott. Uh, clearly going to get a lot of support on the day, one would feel. Um, coming back to you, Stephen, with regards to State, man, uh, could be well in. Is his inexperience, though, uh, uh, an issue to you? That's what I was going to say. I mean, he fell, didn't he, when they put the crown jewels on? I think he went off 13 to 8 on in a 100 runner maiden hurdle. I mean, he was obviously absolute stable nap and he'd have won easily and then seven on next time. It's impossible to assess. Yeah. I mean, we had a horse, didn't we, earlier in the week on Tuesday, Gaelic Worry, that was an incredibly short price, but they were wrong, weren't they? Yeah, How yeah. on earth didn't it win? I mean, we must talk about that race at some yeah. point. If you, I've never seen a race <laughs> like it at Cheltenham. It was like a Fosslass maiden hurdle. Tries to the front and everything else. Happened. I have never seen a handicap hurdle at Cheltenham. Like, they crawled round. I mean, it, it looked like, if you're a sort of real punchy betting shop talk, but, but, you know, 20 of the jockeys were on the front one. I mean, but anyway, it got beat. <laughs> they do get beat, and somehow it got beat. I think State Man's probably in a similar bracket. I should think they think it's probably fourteen pounds better yeah. than its mark, and he's four yeah. to one favourite as a result. I mean, you know, we're punters, aren't we? It's virtually impossible, really, to take that sort of price in a twenty. How many? Twenty four is it? Twenty four, twenty five run a handicap. Yeah. Child. You want that sort of price to get a run, uh, unless you're going to get a soft lead in the front that, like Gaelic Warrior, was gifted. Um, so I went for West Cork, who I think. Dan Skelton, we've said before, great record at Cheltenham in the past in these big races. Um, he's won on soft ground at Huntington and he beat a horse at Henderson's, uh, Mr. Coffey, uh, in style. So I'm not too worried about soft ground, although he, mainly you, you sense with Skelton's mm. they're good ground gliders with a bit of speed, aren't they? Yeah. These handicaps. But um, I think he'll run well, but I wouldn't be surprised if all of these Irish horses that Vincent's mentioned are miles ahead of their mark. It seems to be what happens every, every year now. So a great race, a brilliant, brilliant handicap. It's probably the best handicap hurdle of the week in quality terms. I mean, the horse that won at Sandown surprised package the other day. Mm. That that race did fall apart at Sandown, and I suspect he was in the right place out the heat of the, a pace that was too strong, and he ended up winning by miles. But that being said, you know, when he won that race at Sandown, I didn't think he'd be sort of 12, 14 to 1 for his next start, you know, a week yeah, later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's the sort of horse who could have been 4 to 1 favourite. In other years, so it's a fascinating race. There's probably you could have a short list of ten and yeah. the winner. That's the trouble. Absolutely, and I'm sure there'll be some last minute interesting betting moves and plunges. As you know, I've been a West Court fan for some time. A little bit nervous on the ground, but he has got winning form on soft. It's yeah. fair to say, an absolute bonkers price. You'll probably start laughing, but I just thought this kind of sums up the race. It is forty to one. Uh, Henry de Bromhead has Bally Adam in here. Oh, if you go back to his former last season. We've only beat two and a half lengths, but I appreciate it in a grade one in Leopardstown. On the basis of that, off 140 or 142, wherever yeah. he, whatever he's rated, um, he's thrown in an old form, for one of a better a better phrase. And I think he'd probably be a, a, a tentative each way picket, a massive odds there for the Henry de Bromhead team. But yeah, wide open encounter, uh, always great fun, the county hurdle. Yeah, keep your eyes on those betting moves. What price? Will state man go off? Uh, definitely one to keep an eye on. Right, on to the Albert Bartlett, the 450. Uh, Hillcrest uh, will be your market leader, or vying for, for market uh, favouritism alongside Ginto. Uh, of course, you've got Manella Kakuna, the nice guy, Bardenstown lad, and then you're into the bigger prices. Stephen, you can kick us off here, I suppose. Henry Daly, a trainer not noted for overfacing his individuals when it comes to challenge. So I suppose, is that a measure of his confidence in himself, the fact he's decided to run him? Yeah, and, and the rain's come right for Hillcrest. They're definitely, he's a yeah. real slugger. He's going to be a three-mile-plus chaser. Um, I do think he had a very, very hard race at Haydock against horses who are probably very, miles inferior to the ones he's meeting today. And right. reading that form back now, um, I, I've gone off Hillcrest a bit. I mean, I think, as I say, the rain's come for him. I respect him, but I would not be at all surprised if that race left a real mark on it. It was a brutal day that day at Haydock and he had a yeah. very hard race to win and he's now up against fresh Irish horses who've got potential to be proper grade one horses I, I would be slight I think Hillcrest is now a very short price he's about right. three to one I, I think that's too short personally um after that race I've gone for Ginto I think he's Gordon Elliott is on record as saying he really really rates him he thinks the further he goes the better soft ground's fine they've switched him to this race and I think they're probably right to having seen the Supreme yeah. I think that was probably a very good swerve on fast ground and the ground's now come right for him um I think you might get three to one now there is depth in the race now Minella yeah. Kakuna Chantreur the nice guy good time Johnny they're all massive runners um, who are progressing really well. There's a horse of Archie Watson's called Staghorn. Mm. Uh, he hasn't got an earthly. 
Right. No, not an earth thing. I mean, Why? he's 14 to when the ground's far too soft. He right. won't stay. Definitely right. won't stay. Not for me. Not for me. Be against him a place. So play this back when he bolts up. But I just can't <laughs> see it. Um, not for me at all. Very good horse on the flat. And he's taken to hurdling well. But he's quite keen goer. And this wouldn't be his game at all. He'll, he'll be falling out the back of the telly. No, Vincent, uh, I, I mean... <laughs> Where do you go with this, if you see what I'm saying? There's question marks about perhaps those towards the top of the market. There's huge prices about horses with lots of potential here. And you start looking through it, there's horses with lots of soft ground form traded at massive odds. Are we in danger? Uh, you know, we've seen some shocks in this race in the past of going a little bit OTT uh, about those at the top of the market, given this is a race that can sometimes just turn into an absolute battle of wills, can't it? Yeah, no favourite in the last eight years in this race. You yes. had horses like Vanillier won it last year, 14 to 1. Manella Indo, 50 to 1 in 2019. Yeah. Kilbrick and Star, 33 to 1 the year before. Penn Hill, 16 the year before yeah. that. These are outsiders all the way through this. Every, every year there seems to be a throw up here. I'm not quite sure why. You would think that when you're dealing with novice hurdlers, and they're, they're not young, they're not four-year-olds or, or five-year-olds. These are older horses. There should be plenty of them should be able to reproduce what they've done on the way to here. And you would think that over three miles you would be getting, and it should level itself out that mm. the good horses should be at the front. But for some reason they don't. And I'm not quite sure why that is. One horse I fancied all along has been Ginto. Yeah. Every time Gordon Elliott talks about this horse, he says all he does is stay. Um that he wants to go a good gallop, just just keeps plodding on, keeps galloping. Everything about him looks like he's a he's a decent horse and he's going to be there at the end of this. I'll be surprised if he doesn't win. But having said that, the way that this race throws up crazy things every year, there's one really interesting horse in here. Yeah. It's Tony Martin, one of the shrewdest men in the game, mm. without a doubt. And he's supplemented a horse for this. Good Time Johnny, which won a handicap the last day in Leopardstown. That's extremely interesting. Yeah. We had that Gabby Nacco was supplemented the other day. I think they're the only two that were supplemented this yeah. week. And Gabby Nacco finished second at 25 to 1 for Gavin Cromwell in the Arkle. Yeah. I, th this horse is currently 16 to 1 with Boyle Sports. I'd be surprised if he's not involved. It's it's hard to pick why he'll be involved, but just Tony Martin is too shrewd to yeah. stick eight grand in, in here to supplement this horse. I'd be surprised if that's not somewhere in the in the frame. Yeah, he's he's the, he is definitely a joke in the pack. Yeah. A, it seems very un- Tony Martin like um you normally expect yes, him to a nice handicap yeah. lot. and also yeah a lot of his well, a lot of his best form appears to come on a sound surface anyway it's Tony Martin so who knows he knows a lot more yes. than I do <laughs> that way so yeah <laughs> I agree <laughs> all of us put together I'd yeah, say yeah. yeah yeah so no fascinating but yeah uh, to confirm your selections for the race uh Vincent I'd stick with Ginto I've thought yeah. all along that he's the one for this made for it but we'll wait and see what happens okay uh Stephen Oh, yeah, I'm Ginto as well, and I'll be against Hillcrest and against Staghorner Place. Right, interesting. Yeah, I, I've got a, I've backed a couple of uh, Raffies in here. Uh, classic getaway uh, for the Chief of the Park uh, stud. I thought looked, uh, for one of a better phrase, a beautiful plodder. Uh, and uh, my, my, my team Skelton, I keep thinking I'm going to have actually quite a good Friday. This Bally Griffin Cottage absolutely mm. ploughed through the mud at Lingfield last time. About the form in itself is nowhere near what needs to be. But then I often say this race might not turn out to be anything to do with form. It could be you can run through Treacle um, at, at three o'clock on a on a Friday afternoon. So he's a huge, he's going to be a four mile chase with time at Bally Griffin Cottage. So I think there's a couple for me uh, at each way prices. Right on to the big one, of course, at 3.30. Uh, it is the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Uh, what a race we've got in store here. Uh, 11 due to go to post uh, for the Blue Ribbon event. Uh, Galvin and Aplutard vying for favouritism. Uh, Stephen, you can kick us off uh, with those two. Uh, I mean, uh, the pros and cons for either. Are you particularly in one camp or the other? I really have been strong on Aplutard, Ed, yeah. for uh, a long time. I possibly could have done without the rain, but he's got, you know, he's a winner in heavy ground at Oid too before he... He came to Ireland. Uh, he's got loads of speed. Mm. Uh, and I was thinking it'd be sort of good to soft and he'd murder Galvin for speed. But obviously it could become more of a test now. It'd be the worry, wouldn't Galvin it? Into it? It definitely is a slight worry. I think yeah. you're definitely going to get a bigger price. I mean, I've been thinking yeah. that seven to two is very fair. But looking now, there's money come for some funny ones like Royal Pagal on the ground, a shortened right up. Album photo is much tighter. There's quite yeah. a few middle pins who are now runners who... Or, you know, earlier on, when we started off on Good to Firm on Tuesday, I was thinking, well, good, you know, this is absolutely made for April's yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, all yeah, these yeah, old cruise. sluggers are a million, but they're not now. Uh, the market has changed accordingly. I think there's still horses who are impossible. I'll be amazed if they win and I'll be losing heavily accordingly. Uh, Tornado Flyer, no chance of staying. Terrible form in the Gold Cup. Chantry House is an absolute million. Cannot have him at all. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to film that. Oh, I know, no. Santini, <laughs> no. Santini will run on for six. 
from having been a million at all stages and I writes out class. The, the best rag Vincent will hate this is Asterion <laughs> Folon. Oh. Who, I know he's going to go on the floor and you'll be putting the, the hands will be getting in the air, but uh, he, he has got a lot of ability. At, you know, he's going to be sort of 40 plus on the exchanges. You'd have to have him winning it. He's the sort of, he'd be ridden cold by Cooper out the heat of the race. And he's the sort of, you know, I, I remember being in the ring when bookmakers, when they got, you know, Norton's coin and all these mythical, you can get a result in a gold cup. It's not impossible. They get racing a long way out and things can happen. So I'll, that that is the best of the rags for me as steering Colonge. I don't fancy protector at all. I know you do, Ed, but I don't think he's the grade. And I know they say he wants soft. I don't think... In my mind, he's a strong traveller, and I, mm. I can't see him off the bridle beating these, to be honest. So I think A plus Stud and Galvin are the front two, and you're, you're getting much, much better value than it looked like you were going to get. Um, I think A plus Stud will go really well. The main thing about A plus Stud is run two blinders this season when Henry de Bromheads were absolutely awful, uh, and he's now going fine. So I think A plus Stud is very much the one to beat. Well, interesting. Uh, one horse we haven't mentioned so far is last year's Chant and Gold Cup winner, uh, Manella Indo. And earlier on, we caught up with Boyle Sports Ambassador Robbie Power for his thoughts. Yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to the Gold Cup and, and Manella Indo is a fantastic player to have. Um, he's the reigning champion. And I thought I was very happy with his run in Leprous on the last day. I thought he ran a, arguably a better race than he did in that race last year. He comes into the race in good form. I've sat him on the track the last couple of mornings and he's as per usual, he's travelled over really well and, and feels good. Um, it's a very, very competitive Gold Cup. Um, I have huge respect for Galvin and Aplutar. I think they're two um, strong contenders, along with Album Fold, who's a true winner of the race, but he is getting a little bit older. Mm. Um, I wouldn't stop him in for anything else in the race. Uh, I think he's in great form. His course form is fantastic. Um, and hopefully he can go back to back in the Gold Cup, but his big danger for me, I think, is probably Galvin. Thanks to Robbie for his input there. Uh, Vincent, we'll come to you for yours. Uh, Manella Indo, previous Charlton Gold Cup winner, signs last time out. He was just coming back to hand. As Henry de Bromhead's gone on record, a uh, quote here to say, for whatever reason, this fella grows another leg when he turns up to Cheltenham. And uh, his CV uh, pretty much proves that. <laughs> it does, yeah. Last year was, was a terrific performance. Um, I think it's great for Robbie Power coming back from injury as well. He hasn't had a good time in the last year or two to get a ride like this. It's unbelievable. How could you think you were going to pick up a spare ride on a Gold Cup winner and um, <laughs> coming to retain its trophy? It's amazing, really. Um, the other side of that is I, I wasn't that impressed with the run in Leperstown the last day. Okay. I know people say that he's a spring horse and that some of his form this season has been very poor. Um, I, I thought the first day in Down Royal with Froden, I thought, okay, you, you give him the benefit of the doubt there, first run of the season. And he's Galvin in front of him that day too. And then he was very poor when he went to the UK. I didn't think it was much of a run the last day, to be honest, which I think it's a, it's a level below this in what he's, what he's needs to reproduce. Okay, Cheltenham is a factor, no doubt. And the Cheltenham factor can be huge for horses. So maybe I, I wouldn't rule him out, but I wouldn't be ruling them totally in either. Yeah. There's other things in here. That, like the ground has definitely changed. So you, you look at Album Photo, who's won this race twice. He hasn't been beaten when the ground has had soft or heavy in its description, like proper soft ground or heavy ground. He hasn't been beaten since he fell in the RSA in 2018 at Cheltenham, uh, race one by presenting Percy. That will tell you how long ago that is. Um, he wins every time he gets heavy ground. So if, if the ground is pretty testing, he has to come back into this. They've cheek pieces on for the first time. The other one, Stephen was mentioned there, Asterian Falange. Like I've said it all along, not for me. Why do you need to back a horse who can't jump a fence? <laughs> yes, in I testing ground, that jump. might suit him. He just makes he one can... mistake. He has that sort of yeah. eye shut moment, doesn't he? Like Cato Starr yeah. used to do at Kempton that came to the last, you know, jumps brilliantly yeah. the whole way around and suddenly one moment of madness. I was reminded of when it fell in the, uh, Asterian fell in the King George because he jumped perfectly well that. He jumped every That's fence right. well and then he fell at the yeah. last, I mean. And, and like they've tried loads of different things with him. And I'm sure Willie Mullins is a genius. He'll eventually get this. It will click at some point. But I still think, God, you, you, you can't take a chance. OK, the price is very generous. Mm. Boyle Sports currently 22 to 1. It's a big price. And yes, maybe a couple of quidmen for someone. But it's, it's just not for me. And it will never be for me, even if he does win a gold <laughs> cup, which I'll be shocked if he does. Um, the, the other thing here is Galvin has, always, has been my selection for a long time. I think he, yeah. he, wants, he wants this trip. He'll stay all day. Mm little slight worry about the ground for him. Mm. Um, while he does stay all day, he tends to like it on a little bit better ground. He's never really nervous, run on yeah. very testing. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the only question, Mark. It's not to say he won't do it, but um, 
like he's got Davy Russell on him as well. God, there's no better horseman, is there? Yeah, yeah. Um, I I like the idea of this. I think Galvin all along, I've thought he's he's right there. He's going to be there. And if the ground is not a worry, which it probably shouldn't be, um, he won't be far away. And he's got like have such a canny guy like Davy Russell on on the back as well. Whatever's going on, whatever way the pace is, whatever's happening mid race, he'll cover all bases. Davy doesn't make very many mistakes in these type of races. And I, I think you've you've got a good man on your side. Galvin will not be far away, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, the Royal Pagai horse, a lot of money for it in recent days. You say Venetia Williams' horse is running very well, and it's a mudlark, so yeah. that definitely has a squeak. Um, owned by Rich Ritchie as well. I couldn't believe seeing on Tuesday him in the in the pouring rain in his suit and his sunglasses. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Yeah, he really is a character. Yeah, yeah, no umbrella, no nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. He gets his uh, fashion tips from you, Vincent. Definitely. I think it's fair to say. He um, does, yeah. Right, That's so where to, he gets them from, all right. To, to, to conclude, then, I'm going to ask you, gents, for your, your one, two, three in the biggest race of the jump season. Uh, I think it's fair to say. Stephen, you can kick us off. Your one, two, three in the Gold Cup, please. Uh, A plus Tar, Galvin, Asterian, Colon running on for third. <laughs> wonderful scenes, wonderful scenes. Uh, uh, Vincent, yourself? I'll go something similar. I'll go Galvin to beat a Plutard. An album photo in third. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try and rip up the script. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm protector. Right? I just, I love the way you went through the mud at eight tree. I, I take Stephen's point. Uh, he does travel strongly, but if he can travel strongly through the mud, I think that will get him into the race, shall we say, at least anyway. Uh, what I'm hoping will be a quiet ride from, uh, from Harry Skelton. Mm -hmm. I go him to win, uh, Galvin to be runner up. And uh, yeah, I think Royal Pagai, the ground could have just come absolutely spot on for that horse, uh, run on into a place. Uh, either way, Always an absolute cracker. Uh, of course, uh, keep your eyes on um, irishracing.com uh, for all the latest news, reviews, all things chat and gold cup, all the last minute dramas. There often seems to be something uh, along the way, doesn't there? Right. Once that's done and dusted, uh, we move on uh, to the 410, of course, which is the Hunter Chase. I'm sitting this one out. Uh, two expert Hunter Chase uh, preview night um, <laughs> panel I've got in front of me here. Right? Go on, Vincent. Uh, any of you on this one? Well, the first thing is I, I've been someone who has opposed Bill away the last couple of years here. I've been lucky. He's finished second twice and um, only beaten a short head last year by Porlock Boy. I, I'll oppose him again. Um, it's he's he's a horse that he's a, he's a decent horse out of Willie Mullins, in fairness, for this for this type of race. But you can't depend on him to really put his head down and battle up the hill. And I I'll be against him again. I find it difficult to know too much about these hunter chase form but th this um david christie horse winged leader david christie does really well with these hunter chasers point to pointers this horse has won nine point to points he's out he's coming in here off the back of five wins in a row i wouldn't be surprised to see this horse beat bill away he beat bill away in thurless um on the 23rd of january beat him by 12 lengths i i think he's going to be value you're looking at bill away will be a short price because he's been second in the race the last two years he's currently around a five to two chance and you're looking at the um the other horse winged leader is five to one with boiled sports so that that looks like a bit of value he's he's beaten the favorite the last day why won't he do it again okay interesting stuff there um i, I like those views uh steven yourself this is when you sit out uh, go to the fridge make yourself some cheese on toast yeah, or do, do you, get, you get really stuck no, in? i think it's a nice watching race isn't it i mean i like a point to point but mainly for sort of three sandwiches and two pints of uh Sussex best and a picnic, to be honest. But it is a great day out the points. Points. Um, this is another Irish dominated race. Uh, Bill Away started favourite on his last nine starts, which must be some sort of record. I thought he's won yeah. three of them. He's been second twice in this race. He's bound to give his running. He was my token selection. I'd quite like to see David Maxwell on Bob and Co mm. win. Virtually Paul Nichols' only runner of the week now, isn't he? He's, he's yeah. thrown all his toys out the pram now, Nichols, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, he's hardly running anything. He's saving them all for Aintree, apparently, yeah. where yeah. it'll probably be good ground. But Bob and Co, um, David Maxwell's had a brilliant season. He's agricultural, but he does win races. He, he's not a bad tactician. And Bob and Co was absolutely cruising when he got rid of uh, his jockey last year uh, in this race. So I should think Bob and Co will go well, but not a betting race for me, no. Yeah, I think, um, generally speaking, uh, one I will be sitting out as well. Uh, the 450, uh, small field here for the Mayor's Chase. So we've got the eight declared. Uh, Trappy, though, if you're looking at a betting, you've got LMA, Mount Ida, Concertista, all trying to in pitch in and around the favourites, Mark, here. Um, I find this a hard one to sum up, Vincent. Uh, you got a strong view on this? I haven't really, but I do think there'll be an Irish winner, in my opinion. Yeah. I think Mount Ida is the most likely. Uh, one that Kim Muir 
um, at the at the meeting last year, I, c- I couldn't believe there was a um, back from ten to one into three to one favourite for the Kim Muir last year, mm. uh, when it was trained by Denise Foster instead of Gordon Elliott, and I saw a message from Betfair the other day saying the horse uh, traded a thousand to one in running for that race last year, which I hadn't <laughs> realised, um, yeah. which is astonishing. I don't think you'll be getting anything like those odds this time round. But yeah. um, Mount Ida has been in good form over the last couple of months. It's another one. I think Gordon Elliott could have a really big day. Um, Gold Cup day. He's got lots of serious contenders, and this is definitely one Mount Ida. It beat Ellie May, who's another um, decent contender here. It beat Ellie May the last day in Fairy House, and Ellie May has come out and won won a nice since a race that had won the previous year before coming here, but it's been beaten in Cheltenham before. Concertista is the obvious one again to be a contender, and it's won here at the festival before. I'm just not sure. I think Mount Ida might just have a little bit more. It's by Yates as well. I, I like those Yates horses too. So yeah. I, I think Mount Ida is a contender. She'll be involved and she's probably a little bit short, two to one. But at the same time, I think she, I think it's very hard to see what's going to beat her. Yeah, you know, fair point here. I mean, very different types of uh, mare here, Stephen, to bring yeah. you in. Uh, you've yes. got, uh, obviously... Ellie May and Constantista who've got shown a lot of dash, especially Constantista two mile form. Mount mm. Ida, we know, stays three and a quarter miles. Surely on this ground, that stamina is a huge tick in the box. Yeah, this is a real tactical puzzle, isn't it? I, I mean, I like Ellie May as a mare. When she, she took a while to get going this season, uh, first two starts, she was beaten at short prices, but she jumped really well when she won last time out in really testing ground. I think she's going to lead. Hopefully, Zambella won't spoil her on the lead. Out in front in these races, jumping well, I think she'll go really well. But I can see the case of Mount Ida. There's not many runners. Eight runners, um, punter-friendly shape. But the only thing is, each way, the rags do all look impossible. I mean, Vienna Court has got been a terrific... Form. Got yeah, the and, form, and Vienna, terrific yeah. advert for Tristan Davis. He's had a yeah. good season. with. He's got about half the number of horses he had at one stage. But they've all been running well for most of the season, which yeah. that's not always the case with Tristan Davis. He often blows hot and cold. But Vienna Court... Maybe not quite the grey, but as you say, tough battle hard and does it here. So, yeah, liable to give running. Scarlet and Dove has got an abysmal run last time to overcome. And Zambella, I don't think, is good enough and won't be able to lead with Ellie May in the race. So it looks the big three at the front to me. And I preferred Ellie May over Mount Ida. But maybe the, the really testing ground, if it is testing on Friday at this stage, might swing it to Mount Ida. But by the way, Ed, we'll have to talk. The scheduling of Cheltenham, we've got that brilliant gold cup at 3.30. Oh. And then it sort of whimpers out. This is bad race planning, isn't it? This race is not a very high-quality, punter-friendly uh, race particularly. And then the last race is absolutely impossible. So it does end with a bit of a whimper. The whole um, scheduling needs to be looked at, I think. that They've got it wrong this year, personally. Well, don't worry, it'll be a five-day meeting soon, so they can move oh, them yes. on to the Saturday. <laughs> right, um, yeah, <laughs> m- m- moving on to the finale, uh, the, the get-out-of-jail stakes, the um, get-home stakes, whatever you want to call it, the uh, could-be-hitting-the-panic-button stakes for myself uh, it, by, by the time it comes to uh, half-five on the Friday. If you're relying on the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap Hurdle for a winner over two and a half miles, we've found two esteemed gentlemen who are going to find you it now. Uh, right, Stephen, Langer Dan. Nine to two. We all know what happened last year. He bumped into a grade one horse yeah. in a conditional jockey's handicap in the form of Galloping the Champ. Is he going to bump into anything here? Is he going to get the job done? He, he could well do. I mean, I, I've tipped Lallinger down from the, about um, two months ago when we started studying everything. Yeah. He has sort of halved it off, divided by three in price. I think he was 10 or 12, wasn't he? Uh, and he's actually got shorter for finishing it out with the washing at Taunton. But if you watch that Taunton run back, I mean, how they didn't have them in, I'll never know. I mean, he went from sort of seven to one, which was a huge price on form anyway, out to sort of 16 on the exchanges. And he, he dropped him out last of six, and that's where he stayed. Um, and what he got dropped three pounds for it, which, well, I mean, it's amazing, really. Some of the handicapping is quite wild. It's like the Wild West at the minute, isn't it? But um, uh, soft ground's fine for Langer Dan. Maybe he'd prefer... Uh, better ground. Ideally, he's a smooth traveller. He must go well here. I thought he's got everything ideal. As you said, he bumped into one last year. He's been laid out for this race. He's a proper plot. The only negative, and we, we've been saying it a lot this week, is because every race has gone through the fine tooth comb for the last three months, a lot of the prices are in the sponge, as we used to say. Mm. So, but they've gone. They've long gone, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're left sort of thinking, actually, he's now five to one, and that is plenty short enough in a race of this nature. And I know, Ed, you've got one here, Hollow Games, who is a could be a blot on the handicap. And there's probably five or six others from Ireland as well who could be even further ahead of their marks. 
Yeah, I thought Hollow Games, 7-1 with Boyle Sports. Uh, I thought, crikey, you know, this is a horse, all his form in soft, <laughs> heavy ground. Uh, three, you know, three nice wins at lower level. I mean, what was he? Third behind Ginto, beaten four lengths. He's in a mm. conditional jockey's handicap hurdle here off one four three. Um, of course, Gordon Elliott's won this a couple of times in recent years as well. Yeah, I, I, I thought he looked potentially very well handicapped. Uh, just finally, before we move on to Vincent, Stephen, uh, we've talked about those at the top of the market. I mean, the price is flying around about all sorts of individuals in here. I mean, there must be something at uh, double digits, which is at least you think could could go into the each way category. Well, uh, o, o Fleuron, which is another Elliott horse, has only had four runs over hurdles. One is Bumper. He ran really well in a tactical race. Um, behind Slip of the Tongue last time at Punches Down. Handicap debut. I suspect they think he's got in here fairly lightly as well. I mean, we, again, we must say about Extra Places, said this is a classic Extra Places race. There's a million runners. You've got to find bookies offering Extra Places. It, it makes all the difference. Maybe a floor on is about 14 to 1 might be the one to surprise. Yeah, indeed, indeed. A floor on a strong hand for Gordon Elliott, I think it's fair to say. Right, Vincent, you've been chopping it a bit to get stuck into your favourite race of the week. Uh, let us have the winner, please. The first thing to say is Hollow Games, very hard to go against Hollow Games. Jordan Gainford on it as well. Like this being an opportunity race for con or conditional jockeys race, you need a decent rider, I would have thought, is what you're yeah. looking for here. And Jordan Gainford, he's had winners at the meeting last year. He's been riding loads of winners in Ireland this season. He's definitely one to take into account. And I wouldn't put you off that tongue strap on for the first time. The other one for me is the one I really like is the Goffer, also trained by Gordon Elliott. Hmm. He's got Sam Ewing on this. And um, I think this horse is very well handicapped. He runs off a 140. I've gone through this in previous shows. I think he's, he's probably 10 pound well in. And I put a lot of study into him. I really do think he's going to be a contender. And then the other one that I just mentioned is Willie Mullins has a horse in this called Five O'Clock. Hasn't run since this race in 2020. Mm. Backed off the boards that day, back from 14s into 7s on the day, and was going well, but got um, made one bad mistake and then got hampered, and that was the end of that. Rider lost his irons. Finished seventh. Hasn't been seen since. But what's interesting here is normally with races both in Ireland and the UK, Willie Mullins doesn't tend to jock his horses up until the last minute. The first right. horse jocked up of the Irish ones yesterday was this horse with Jack, Jack Foley on it, mm. who has been riding umpteen winners in Ireland over the last few months. Mm. So very significant. Willie Mullins had obviously booked him at a very early stage, making sure no one else got him. So that's yeah. interesting. The horse is 16 to 1 at the minute. I wouldn't put someone off that each way. But for me, the goffer will be involved. And I think he's a great price. Yeah, the goffer. Uh, Stephen, you want the last word on this race? Well, I've, I've gone for Langer, Dan. Yeah. I think it's a small stakes race, uh, but he'll get a patient ride, which will be a big help. Uh, and I'm sure he's been primed for this race. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm going hollow games. I, I might be an absolute mug, which, you know, I've been called on a few occasions, but uh, yeah, six, six places, Boyle Sports, seven to one. I, I'd be shocked if hollow games can't finish in the top six off one, four, three in a handicap. Maybe it's too good to be true, but um. Crikey, he's running in grey ones. Um, some of these others have been running around. I don't even know where. Right. Um, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it, it really is to get out of jail stakes. Really looking forward to that one. But um, no, what a wonderful day. Charter Gold Cup should be an absolute highlight. Triumph looks a cracker. Fingers crossed we have some, some spellbinding action. My thanks as always uh, to Stephen and for Vincent for their input, as they have done uh, all week for the Charlton Festival. And of course, uh, keep checking bettingexpert.com for all Stephen Harris's latest tips and irishracing.com for all the latest news, views and features. Please do enjoy your Charlton Gold Cup day. Please do gamble responsibly. And we'll see you again soon.